I've been through a lot of phases in my life, from Ooh. ours to Domo to uh this. Maybe I'll make a video about them one day, but today is all about one obsession in particular, Taylor Swift. Oh. Yep, I was a Swifty. At just 14, she signed her first record deal, and as the years went on, her fan base grew and grew and grew. She broke records left, right, and center. It goes without saying that people adored her music, and things seemingly couldn't get any better for the pop star, right? Right? They got bad. Evil Scott Borchetta enters the chat. This is the CEO of Big Machine Records, the label she was signed to. Long story short, Borchetta sold Big Machine to a guy called Scooter, a guy she hated and he now owns all her master recordings, aka this good gets all the dollar dollar from Taylor's music, the releases that made her a star in the first place. <laughs> She tried buying her music back, but in the end, she decided that re-recording her songs was a better option. Now let's fly out of all of that drama, and I'll let you know what the point of all of this is. In light of these re-recordings, my hashtag Swifty <laughs> phase has been reignited. I'm going to share some experiences, tell stories, and also share some opinions which many people may or may not agree with. Fearless. Fearless. <laughs> this album. Call the authorities because I have been assaulted in the face with a large slap of nostalgia. This is where my Swifty status all began. It was Taylor's second album and it banged. Most notably her single Love Story, which has sold over 18 million copies worldwide. The song spread like I had never seen before. Picture this, an entire school's worth of kids sitting in an assembly hall. That's me over there. Hi guys. A teacher drags out this ancient bulky projector. These clear sheets have the lyrics to love story on them. We were about to sing love story as a school. What made this experience so memorable though was the students reaction. <laughs> so yeah, my school was a Swifty too. <laughs> Christmas of 2008 was the day I received the Fearless Platinum Edition CD. And I also got a purple iPod Nano. And I'd listen to it nonstop every day. Ooh. This CD included a DVD with behind the scenes footage of music video shoots. I lost count with how many times I actually watched these, especially the clip where she screams at the spider. I know, it Haha. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Let's look at some songs, shall we? Songs I like from Fearless. Number one, Fearless. <laughs> Still one of my favorites. Forever and Always, piano version. Give me a second. Untouchable. I only recently found out that this song is actually a cover of a rock type song by a band called Ludo Halo. This was always one of my fave songs of this album and is super underrated. The chorus used to be my sound notification for MSN Messenger. <laughs> hey Steven, a catchy bop. She did a different laugh in the new version. It caught me off guard. <laughs> White Horse, Breathe and You're Not Sorry. Amazing sad songs to look out of the car when it's raining and to pretend you're in a music video. I'm just realizing most of these are sad songs. <laughs> Mid songs list, I don't hate, but I don't love. Overall, this album is pretty good. It was nice to revisit this part of my life and hear how much Taylor's vocals have improved since then. Giveaway time. Yep, we're doing this again already, but this time there are five tablets up for grabs. Thanks to the amazing people over at XP Pen. The Artist 13 second gen tablet from XP Pen is the top prize for this giveaway, which you can see me demonstrating here. It has a 13.3 inch fully laminated screen, making it effortlessly portable and ready to use no matter where you take it. And something I've never seen before with art tablets, it has a nice color range to choose from. As I said, there are five winners this time, so there are going to be other prizes up for grabs. Second and third place winners will receive this, the Star G960S. And fourth and fifth place winners will receive this, the Deco Mini 4. All you need to do to win is solve the following riddle. Then send a screenshot of the answer to my Instagram DMs. The first person to guess correctly will win the first prize. Then everyone else who guesses correctly within 48 hours will go into a hat and the first four to be drawn out will win the other remaining four prizes. Here's the riddle. Hoist up huge sails, we're off to a place not far from here. 
stand tall and see for yourself, over the edge you peer. When the work week is concluded and the darker shade is included, the excitement builds as we prepare to cheer. Take a look around, what do you see? So much tech you'd think you're in the studio of Mr. Brown Lee. So take your pick, feel free to sift, you're very close to locating your gift. Among the stash of many, this item won't cost a penny. It represents my entire mood. You could sniff it out like it's your favorite food. Big thanks to XP Pen for the help with this and I wish you all good luck with the treasure hunt. Speak now. Speak now. This one is highly underrated in my opinion. At just 20 years old, Taylor wrote all of these songs by herself. Also, fun fact, it was released on my birthday, so you know, no bias there. Anyone else remember the pressure of being at the store and having to make a decision between the red and purple dress editions? Cause I do. Months after I bought the album, I received something in the mail. <coughs> my first ever concert in my life was on the 10th of March, 2012 in Sydney. And as you can tell, it was to see Taylor Swift perform. The most vivid memory I have though actually has nothing to do with the show. It was my choice of shoes that day. They Killed! Never again. The show was great though. We were at the back of the arena, which is fine and all. I could see everything. Hot Shell Ray was the supporting act, so uh, make of that what you will. Before I dive into some songs, can we just talk about the album cover? Why did I only find out this year? that this is actually a painting and not a real photo. What? Also, look at how awkward her arm is. <laughs> Likes, mine, underrated and still a bop. Props my fave single. Long live, all time favorite Taylor Swift song right here. Enchanted, the fact that she made this song about the Owl City guy, then he makes a public confession, then he gets ghosted. Lol, meh. Nah, innocent. I mean, it's not a bad song, it's just about Kanye West, and yeah, no thanks. Easily my favorite Taylor Swift album, and one where I don't have to skip any songs. Self-titled Taylor Swift. This is her first album, and it is very... Yeehaw! Yeehaw! I love the design sticker decals on this cover! I'm just putting it out there, this isn't my type of music style and it's pretty different to the stuff that she's known for. I got this CD shortly after Fearless and I was convinced she had a tattoo of a heart on her foot for like literally years. Yes! Picture to burn, our story. Okay, these are bops but karaoke bops. Do you know what I mean? Meh. Nah. Tim McGraw. Not related to the song, but Tim McGraw is a country singer and he has a song that starts off with Got Lil Wayne pumping on my iPod. Like what? A place in this world. Was in the movie Ramona and Beezus, then Joey King ended up being in her mean music video. As I said, not really my thing. To be honest, I find a lot of these songs boring. Yeehaw? Red. Red. My mum went out of her way to get this CD for my 12th birthday. This was a cringe part of my life. And yes, I am confessing that I made a parody song of We Are Never Getting Back Together, but it was about pancakes. When I first listened to this album, I loved it. However, over time, I realized that maybe I don't like some of the songs as much as I thought. Like... All too well, loved it as a 12 year old when it came out. Holy ground, someone said this song makes them want to gallop and I can see that. All too well 10 min version, obviously loved it again as a 21 year old. Mid. Nah. Stay, stay, stay. Most annoying song and the new version, she has a lisp on hopes and dreams and it throws me off even more. I came to a realization that maybe I'm only liking these songs because of the person making them. That it's purely nostalgia that's keeping me listening to albums where I don't even like majority of the songs. So... That eventually changed. My music taste was also expanding at this point, but it's not like I stopped being a fan of her music. I actually really enjoyed her songs for The Hunger Games, Keep Your Eyes Open, and Safe and Sound. I still listen to those today, but the music was moving in a direction I wasn't too interested in. 1989. I can see why people love this one as it's seen as a pop anthem kind of vibe, but it kind of missed the mark for me once again. I'm sorry, I just couldn't get it to it. Like, Wildest Dreams, Clean. Very limited songs I like, but I like both of these because they have like a calm sort of vibe about them and I like that. Meh. Nah. 
I don't like repetitive songs and this album unfortunately had a lot of that. Like Shake It Off, Welcome to New York and Out of the Woods. Are we out of the woods yet? Are we out of the woods yet? This was the moment I concluded I was no longer a Swifty. Oh. Also, I apologize in advance, but nothing can make me unsee this. <laughs> Reputation. After a three year hiatus, Taylor had taken some time out, hiding in suitcases, and then BOOM! Reputation is here. No surprise, this style of music still wasn't for me, but turns out I liked it way more than 1989. Like, delicate, such a calm, chill song, my fave on the album. Meh. Nah. End game. I'm sorry, I can't take Ed Sheeran seriously in this. <laughs> Look what you made me do. The music video was cool. I did watch the Reputation tour on Netflix and I have to admit it looked stunning and her team knows how to put on a show regardless of the music itself. Lover. I'm sure we can all agree that this was Taylor's flop era and ended quickly due to COVID. Quite a switch from Reputation, especially when it came to the songs. Spelling is fun! I rest my case. Like. None. That's how much I don't like this album. Mid. Cruel Summer. This should have been her lead single, to be honest. Nah. Literally the rest of it. Folklore. <laughs> now for the redemption arc. Taylor for sure took advantage of isolation and I believe made her most beautiful music yet. Never did I expect to enjoy a Taylor Swift album so much again. Like. The One. Good open for the album, sets it up well. Cardigan. One of my favourites overall, tells the story so well lyrically, and the bridge. Yes! Meh. Meh. Honestly, the Nas section, I think I just haven't heard those songs enough at this point. If she ends up sticking with this direction, I would just... <coughs> Sorry. Evermore. Two albums? Ah! Like Willow, another strong single. Ivy, my favorite from this album. Long story short, the storytelling. Oh, meh. Meh. Words can't describe how much I love folklore and evermore. They are my ideal background music for everyday life, and I even had them on repeat while I scripted this video. At the time of recording this video, Taylor has yet to release her newest album, Midnights. But I'll be reacting to this album and its entirety in a fun little second channel video, so I'll leave a link to that in the description since it's probably been up for a while now. Now, a question for you Wobbly Boys. I assume that you watched this video this far because you're also a fan of Taylor Swift. So, let me know in the comments below what your favourite era is and why. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this.